what it did to me last time. I'm not sure why, so I'm going to give it a few minutes for people to find me. Um, I know that some of you are commenting on the one that's out there. Um, hopefully, you'll find me. There we go. I know. I don't know what happened, Kylie. It did the same thing as it did last week. After 48 minutes, it popped me off. I don't know why they're doing that. I apologize, but we will uh, let a few people find me again, and then we'll uh, start again. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. Technology. Facebook's having issues for one thing, and it may be putting some kind of a time limit on things, so mm -hmm. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Do what, babe? Yes, I'm on a split screen because I wanted to make sure they knew it was me. Sorry about that. Yeah, it. Uh, I've got you, but I don't have the other screen. Okay, it it. Uh, and I have the comments. Cut me off, so I apologize. Um, I will kind of reiterate what I did so far. Okay, sorry about that. Technology. You can do this with any color, right? Yes, Janet, you can do this with any color. So um, I just stayed in the, the green tones when I did this one, but I use it a lot for like backgrounds on sky, water, anything. So just start with your lightest color and then move up to your darker one. You can even put the light color all over the piece and then come back and add a dark. Um, if you go back to the yellow rose, uh, tutorial that I did. It's on the Facebook page and it's on uh, the YouTube. Um, it shows you how I put one color and then I come in and I shade it around uh, the design. So, I mean, there's all different types of techniques that you can do with this. All right. I'm going to hide my face. You don't need to see that. <laughs> okay. So, I used the medium sumi brush and I mixed the green colors 50 50 with the gloss medium. And what that does is extend, the, think about the word medium. I'm just going to reiterate what I said before. The word medium is an extender and opener. Um, it keeps the product open longer and allows you to manipulate it and move it around. And then I also thinned it with water. So I just came over and I added water to my colors, stirred those up, and then just move it around. Constantly moving. Don't dab dab okay because when you put it down and you put it down again and put it down again you're going to get marks okay you don't want to do that you want to keep it bouncing and moving and turning if your brush gets dry then add more water or more product to it okay all right any questions about that hey kylie i'm glad you get to watch live too that's awesome <laughs> And tell me where, where you're from again. Um, be sure and comment. We do give, uh, we have a drawing at the end where we do prizes. Okay. And uh, while everybody's finding me again, I'll show you what I'm going to do for tonight. I'm going to give out uh, the watercolor poppy, which is a silk screen project. You don't have to silk screen it though. You can just print out the pattern and uh, do it similar to this. You could pipe it. There's all different ways, but this has a watercolor background also using uh, a couple of different colors. So that's one of the prizes. And then I'm going to give away this ceramic vase that I did. I did this as a um, webinar, uh, gosh, before the end of the year. So this is using color concentrates on soft fired or on bisque, either one. Okay. So that's going to be Burt Strawberry Vase is going to be one of the prizes. Mm. And while everybody's kind of reconnecting, I'll show you the pieces from last week. Um, this has got the watermelon dish, the one that I showed. This is the one that I put the frit um, on top of the enamel color while it was wet. And then and I did this on clear and put white on the back. And then this one was just on a double thick or six millimeter clear. And then I just used the frit for the melon. And there are three videos. Facebook stopped my broadcast. You can learn more. Am I off again? Oh, I just got a message you guys that Facebook has stopped my broadcast. Am I still on? Well, I'm still seeing you, but there's that lag, so. 
I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's the previous one. Okay, guys, can you tell me if you can still see and hear me? I've got a message that came up, and I want to make sure that um, you guys can still. I got you. Love the water. Okay, I'm going to assume that I'm still good to go. Okay, all right. Thank you, thank you. There's about an eight-second delay, so when I ask something and you guys uh, uh, do your comments, then, you know, we have to wait for each other. Did All right. This from no, what did she say? Can you do background all over then pattern and color? Okay, so the question uh, that Rosemary had is, can you do the background all over the piece, then apply the pattern? Now, yes, you can, um, unless my precaution would be is, if that color you're putting in the background, is it going to interfere with the color that you're using? Okay, I don't want green under my reds and my oranges. Green under the green is fine. You would have to let that background completely dry before you transfer your pattern, Rosemary, because if you try to do it, it's going to start bleeding like this and it's going to make just a big blurry mess. It's going to be hard to, um, you know, see exactly where your pattern is supposed to be. And like I said, you don't want it interfering with the color. You know, if you've got yellows and purples and all different, I mean, you got to think of what's going to happen when you layer one on top of the other. Okay. And I'm turning this this way so you guys can see it in the camera um, there. Okay. So what I'm going to use now on the flower is 116 Florida orange and 111 red geranium. Again, make sure you uh, shake those colors. I'm going to put some out. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mix them 50-50 uh, with the gloss medium. Okay, NT clear. So this is our clear glaze, but I'm also using it as a medium or an extender so that I can manipulate and blend these colors. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it 50-50. I am going to switch to use my um, small semi brush. And once again, I'm going to mix those colors. I'm not going to add water this time because I'm not doing that watercolor background. Wipe off on my sponge. I think you can see that. That's why I, and a lot of my techniques will tell you to use this little bubble palette and put the sponge in the middle and there's a reason why we put it there and that's one of them. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go into the orange. I always start 95% of the time with my light color and then work up to my dark color. So I've loaded with the uh, Florida orange, the 116, and I'm going to pat that color in where that petal is, and I'm going to come about halfway back. I'm going to make sure I have a good coat. I'm going to turn the piece, and you have to turn this. I will know if you ask me, why does mine look lined, and why does it not fade and blend like yours? It's because you didn't turn your piece. So I'm starting, and I'm tucking that red down near the center. That's where I want it the most um, brightest. And then can you see, I still have orange in my brush and red on the tip. So when I touch down, then the red is bleeding back into the orange and fading as I kind of walk the brush back. And I keep going back and forth until I like that blend. And I am going to go a little bit closer so you can see that. I'm going to skip a petal. Question? Mm -mm. Oh, and I did not rinse my brush because I used most of the red that was on there. But if you still had a lot of red on it, then you would just wipe it on your sponge. And you'll see me do that occasionally. Okay, so I'm just, I'm, it's almost like putting two coats on there. Okay, I got out of my line, out of my pattern. So I'm going to grab my other brush. It's still damp, and I'm just going to kind of push it back. Okay, we're good. Turn my piece. So I've got orange still in it. If you have used all that orange, then I recommend let's just do it. I'm going to add a little bit back in there, but wipe it off. And then I'm going to tip into the red. And I'm going to tuck that red where I want it the darkest and walk it back and forth. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right and walk it to the left and then start walking it back. Okay, now 
I think you can, no, I'm not sure you can see that. Let me move this so you can see. So I'm going to take, can you see my sponge burnt? I've got the thing. Well, I can't see your screen now, so. Okay. I have to wait till All right, so there. what I'm going to do is, because I've got red on the tip of the brush, I'm going to just wipe, wipe. I'm not really cleaning the brush. There's still orange in there. I'm just getting rid of what's on the tip because I need the orange. Okay on there next. I'm trying to get that picture so you can see it. So fully load. Pardon? Okay, you saw it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, go back into the uh, orange and pat that color in place. This is a bigger petal, so I need more. So I'm using color concentrates mixed with gloss medium. I'm going to tip, not rinsing the brush, just going straight into the red, tucking the red down where it should be darker near the center and kind of almost in a V shape. So it's it's kind of making like a little V or a C shape there. I grab some more red. This is a larger petal. So I'm going to go up the sides that kind of shades and separates them. And then you can walk it back a little bit in the middle. Now, wipe, wipe. That's all. Don't rinse the brush. Um, you don't want to do that because you're wasting your product. Okay? You're wasting your product if you do that. Back into the orange. And put the orange is my lighter color, so I'm putting it out on the tip. And do you see how far that brush is down? I hesitate to change cameras because we may lose. I said something about Facebook changing policy, so Lord only knows. If we get cut off again, I'll start again, guys. That's all I can do. I'm not sure what they've been really making a lot of changes over the last couple of weeks, and everybody that's doing live broadcast have had issues. I don't know why they have to make it so difficult for us. Okay. Now I'm going to take my clean brush and just kind of clean up that edge. And that's what's nice is because with the medium in it, with the gloss medium in the colors, it makes it easier. Now, could you do this with just the concentrates? Yes, I did that on a big poppy a, a while back. But if you're having trouble blending, and I did the same thing every time I'm going to wipe off that red. Um, if you're having trouble blending and not getting a nice transition from one color to the other, then I definitely recommend that you mix your CCs with your gloss medium. Okay, we have a question. Craig, you want to know what is gloss medium? What is gloss medium? CSP01 gloss medium NT clear glaze. So this is our two coat clear glaze that goes over the finish at the end. Okay, so this is on ceramics, not glass. Okay. So this is ceramic only. You would not use this on glass because this fires to 1830 degrees to get that nice shine that you see over here and your glass does not go that high. So you do not want to add that on top of your glass. Okay. So if you're a glass person, just kind of, you know, watch the technique and I'm sure there's some things you can use. Um, if you have a specific question, be sure and ask in the comments. Turn your piece each time. I did not rinse. I'm picking up the red. And I'm going to pat, pat, pat. Walk it to the right. Walk it to the left. It's my rap song. Sit it down. Sit it down. Mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right. Walk it to the left. And see, I do that until I get it like I want it. Okay? So don't hesitate to piddle with it. Okay? Wipe, wipe. Get that red off of there. Question? No. Okay. All right. So we're going to now. Ben just got on. Karen, we just got on. Hey, Miss Karen. And Den. So we're working on ceramics tonight. And I've mixed the color concentrates with the clear glaze. And Den, you would not do this on glass, only on ceramics, because it's the glaze. The glaze, uh, you, you can't use that on glass. Okay, so I turn it around so that I get that nice blend. So in other words, always tuck your brush where you want that color. And because there's still orange on the brush, 
and the reds on the tip, it bleeds back into it as if you were shading. So any of you that are, um, and then wipe off the red. So if you're a ceramist, you might put, you know, solidly paint orange and go back and float in, we call it, um, the red. Well, this eliminates doing that, okay? And just like in glass painting, a lot of times I will skip and move over to the next petal. So I'm tucking that orange where I want it, turning around. I'm going to pick up the red. I did not rinse my brush. Tuck that red near the center. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right and walk it to the left. And then you can walk it back a little ways. Yes. Is it so, so it's a clear glaze, right? It is a clear glaze. Yes. It's a unleaded clear glaze. So I wiped off the red off the tip of my brush. And I'm going to go over here and do this little bud because it's tiny. And your watercolor marker will bleed, but it's going to go away. It doesn't show up. I did the same thing on this finished piece and it's gone. Okay, pick up the red. Pat, pat, pat. So the tip of my brush is touching where the red is and then I'm just tapping it like this if I were if you were looking at the side so it's tapping it and bouncing that brush okay so that you blend those colors together all right any other questions okay okay so I'm going to keep doing this now there is three coats on these petals this way unless you want them lighter in color. But if you want the nice strong color that you see here, because basically we have diluted the color with the clear glaze so that we can manipulate it and move it and blend it. So you would have to put on more coats for it to be stronger. Okay. Now, if you're a heavy applicant, you know, applicator, <laughs> if you apply color heavy, um, then you may get away with two coats. We're going to do two coats on the leaves because they're darker. Yes. Is the green dry enough that touching it now won't mark it? It doesn't, no, I, you won't move it. Um, if you gouged it with a tool or a fingernail or something, that will show up. But yes, it's pretty much, you can see how it's kind of chalky over here. This is dry. That's still wet. This is still wet, 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 wet. Okay. There's a lot of water on there. Okay, so don't forget after the red to wipe off just the tip. Just one, two. Don't sit there and take all the color out. We want that orange in there so it will blend for us. If you don't have it in, then you're just going to get a stark line of red. And it's not going to be faded into the orange. So I'm leaving that in there, tipping into the red, tucking that near the center and then coming up the sides a little bit keeping that brush i'm going to grab a little bit more red i'm still aiming the brush down and i'm pushing down and literally if you were looking from the side i'm setting the brush like this okay and bouncing it all right wiping off my red going back to my orange okay. any other question yeah, this one off of YouTube. Okay. Uh, Jackie Gray was. I was always taught not. Was always taught to not do red and green in the same firing. Okay. Does that not matter? Okay, so Jackie Gray, um, the red and green thing is old. That is correct if you were 15, 20 years ago, but not anymore. That is unless you pick up some product off of who knows where that still has lead in it, okay? But um, this is an underglaze, it's not a glaze. And what you're referring to is like a really, really red glaze and a Christmas tree green glaze uh, because of the different things that are in them, they used to, um, you would not be able to fire them together or you would get like a smoky look. Uh, it would contaminate the red is what it does. So no, unless you're working with some really, really old product, that rule does not apply anymore, whether it's under glaze or glazes. Okay. So hopefully that helps you with that. All right. We've got a bud up here to do. 
Oops, I forgot to wipe off my red. But I've not rinsed this brush at all. Okay, and I'm because these are two smaller petals, I'm going to tuck these in and do them at the same time. I'm going to turn my piece, pick up my red, put it near the bottom where the stem is, and walk it back up. I think I'm still, yeah, okay. Making sure I was still on camera. And let's hope we don't have any more trouble with Facebook kicking me off. If we do, then we may have to just go straight to YouTube. Um, I'll have to look and see what those new uh, rules are. I know they don't want, um, they, they're not allowing watch parties, uh, if any of you ever did that. Okay, so I'm going to let this first coat dry. I'm going to rinse my brush because we're going to go to the leaves. So I like to work back and forth. Otherwise, you would have to sit here and wait for it to uh, dry. So we're going to use 161 and 162 green leaf and laurel. So this is our one ounce size. This is our two ounce size. Okay. Um, the one ounce size is what we sell in a lot of the kits. Um, let me show you one of those real quick while that's drying. So we have this labeled for the glass community, but it's a CC enhancer kit. So it number one has all of the primary colors in it. Um, so that's what, and they're in this size in there. Okay. And those are still on sale. Um, we do have a kit uh, on the ceramic side. If you go to the color concentrates, you can find the ceramic sampler kit. And let me see if I have, I'm not sure if I have that one or not. One second. Um, it does have a pint of clear glaze in it. So if you have never used our colors and if you're interested in that, um, that is a way to, I think, there we go. So if you're on YouTube, there will be a link that uh, should pop up in the comments, but this is the ceramic underglaze sampler. Um, it has those same 14 colors and then it does have a pint of the clear glaze. Okay. So that is available if you're looking for um, a sampler clip with the clear and you don't have to find it. And it is a little bit cheaper buying it all together. Okay. All right. Any question, Bert? Mm -hmm. Okay. So make sure you shake those. Can you hear that? Okay. So the darker the colors, the other thing is after you shake it, if you'll kind of unscrew the cap and then screw it back down, then when you flip the top, it won't what, what I call burp and kind of bubble out over the, uh, and make a mess. So that's a little trick that I've found over the years. Um, I am going to put the gloss medium in there. Like I said earlier, if you uh, weren't here, um, you can do this without the medium if you want, but it is a little harder to blend and you do not have as much time to blend it. Okay. The medium or the clear glaze keeps it open. And I can only um, tell you what our clear glaze does. Okay. Uh, I can't tell you that anybody else's added to this would do the same thing. Okay. Because there's different properties in the products. It's a good idea not to mix apples and oranges, meaning if you're doing colors for earth, stick with colors for earth. Okay. That's a good rule of thumb until you test it. So if you have a whole bunch of glaze, I know there's been some changes in the market. If you have a whole bunch of um, somebody else's clear glaze, you want to use it up. Absolutely. But just do a little test. Pinks and purples is the um, only thing that really, um, it makes a difference on, uh, it tends to fade out pinks and purples. So you just need to put on an extra coat. So I've mixed those greens up and I'm gonna do the same thing. Small Sumi brush. I'm gonna start at the tip and come about halfway back. I'm gonna turn my piece. I'm not rinsing. Now this dark, I probably got enough dark for 10 times this design. Uh, the dark is very strong. Laurel green, 162. 
extremely strong. You don't need a whole lot of it. And I'm putting it at the bottom where the shadow would be. And then I'm also going to kind of just, do you see how I'm turning my piece and I'm keeping that dark kind of along the outside and the bottom or the lower side. See, this side would be the top of the design. This would be the dark. Okay. Once again, you want to wipe, wipe to get rid of the dark. Go back into your light color. Any questions, Bert? No. Are they still with me? Oops, Morgan. Okay, so pat, pat, pat. Put that color in where you want it. And you know what? A pattern is a guide. You don't have to um, stick to it. I usually paint larger than my patterns. You've heard me say that. Uh, not, do not rinse. Pick up the darker green. Start it where you want it the darkest, which would be down towards the stem. And then walk see i'm going back and forth until i get a nice blend and then i'm moving up the leaf now on this particular one i'm going to add a little bit more dark green on my tip and i'm going to go along this side so you can add your shadows where you want them and just keep working it until you see how it's a nice transitional from one color to the other okay all right wipe off that dark color grab some more of your light do not rinse you waste product if you rinse okay so on the leaves i'm only going to do two coats on the petals i'm going to do three so halfway if you had three colors that you were going to do like we have 160 which is a lighter green that i put in the background you could go a third of it with the light color a third with the medium and then the last third with the darkest color so that would be a three color blend so what we are doing is a two color blend if you don't have some of the first green or first color whatever you're doing still in the brush add it back in the brush if you've used it all before you go into your second color So sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right, walk it to the left. And if you say that to yourself, you will do it. Usually at retreat or in class and see I'm turning the piece slightly and going up that side. I hear them saying that. And uh, Rosemary's out there. She can tell you that if you say it to yourself, you will do it right. And see, I'm just kind of blending it until I get what I want. And then wipe off my dark. Am I selling the plate? Um, I'm giving this one away, the one that's finished tonight. So we have three prizes. We got the watercolor uh, poppy DVD, and then we will have that strawberry vase, and we will have this plate, one of these plates, and then I'll save one for another ceramic. Because I do not need any more samples. I've got storage units full of samples. All right. Anybody got any questions out there about what I'm doing? I'm on disk. I'm using color concentrates mixed with gloss medium. Equal parts, 50-50. And doing a two-color blend. You could do, and we did a watercolor uh, background. I am going to rinse my brush real quick. Because I want to get this off of my petal. So I just rinsed it. I could have used another brush. I just wanted it small. This one was larger. So as long as you've got another brush that you can use, just make sure that if you take off some of your background or you feel like you do, go back into some of your watercolor over there and add it back on there. Okay. Could you do mm -hmm. three coats on part of the leaf? And two on the rest of the leaf to get two tones. <laughs> um, so the question is, can you do two, two coats on one part of a leaf and three coats on another? Um, yeah, you could. But I would just add that third green in if you want 
or just don't go as dark. This has got two coats like I'm showing you. So I did the light, the dark. Um, if you want it thinner, more watercolory, then only do one coat. So I would just suggest that you maybe uh, take a piece of broken bisque or, you know, a sample and just kind of play with it a little bit and see what you get. The reason I do at least two, okay, or three coats. The first coat looks very lined. You can see the lines um, and it's not as smooth as I'd like it. The second coat, it gets better. Third coat, it's pretty awesome. Okay, so that's one of the reasons I do the two to three coats. Okay, hopefully that helps. But I would just recommend if you're looking for a particular technique, um, you know, test it and, and try it out because everybody's application is different. Okay, another question? Okay, all right, so halfway to three quarters with the light color, pick up the dark without washing the brush. And if you need to switch to a smaller brush, you can, but always try to use the largest brush possible. You will get a softer and smoother look if you're using a larger brush, okay? Wipe off the dark. Actually, I'm gonna rinse because then now we need to go back to the uh, petals. Now, usually I like these a little bit, um, and I may just do two coats on this one, then you can see there may not be much of a difference um, it really depends on your application. Okay. Oh, Robin says, I think they may want to know if you carry the plate. So um, the bisque, this is actually, um, oh boy. It's either 04 bisque by Duncan, which was sold to, hmm, don't count me. I think it's Chesapeake uh, Ceramics or, um, B, BI, Bisque Imports, you can buy bisque from them. And then any of your local uh, studios sell uh, pieces in bisque also, okay? So support your local studios if you have one. If you don't and you have to order, then um, there are different Facebook groups that you can uh, get on and ask. There's a lot of people that sell molds, sell bisque. Uh, so just tell them you're looking for something. And I don't remember... It says made in China. So like I said, it's either Duncan Bisque, Mako has Bisque. I mean, there's all different kinds of companies out there that have product. So just do a Google search on uh, ceramic bisque for sale. So light color on the outside, turning my piece, picking up the red without washing the brush and add that in. Now, the first coat took a long time. The second coat, because you've already got some on there, is going to be much quicker, okay? Now, another little trick is this one. I just did the second coat. So I'm going to put two dots with that marker, okay? That was the Statler Tri Plus Fine Liner, okay? That means I have two coats on there, and I don't... So if I have to stop and go chase the dog, the kids, answer the phone, whatever... Um, I will know where I was at and you could just put a piece of saran over your uh, palette and it would keep it fresh or they have little covers that you can put on them also. Or just lay a paper plate over it, just something to keep uh, the air from drying it out. So light color, always start with the light, go to the dark 95% of the time. There are exceptions to the rule, but for tonight, that's what I'm doing. See how quickly wipe off the red. So I'm going to go in, I mean, but you could sit here and do that for each one. Okay. I'm going to go clockwise. So I won't have to do that for every one. But it is, especially if you have a piece that um, has tons of flowers and tons of leaves on it. Oh my gosh. Uh, my fuchsia vase that I did many, many years ago had uh, tons of all of the same thing, just different places. And if you didn't mark it, you would you'd have a hard time keeping track of where you were. Okay, so just sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right, walk it to the left, wipe off the dark. So I'm just wipe, wipe, that's it. I'm not applying pressure. I'm not trying to get rid of all of the color on the brush because I want some of that for the next. So I reloaded with the orange, pat that in halfway, pick up the red. 
sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right, walk it to the left, wipe off the red, go back to the orange, pat it in. If you have too much product left on your brush, like I've got quite a bit there, I'm going to just kind of wipe a little bit of that off um, because I want my red to show up, okay? And I need to add more red on the tip. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Adding more red. Walk it to the right and walk it to the left. Back and forth till I get it nice. Wipe off the red and I'm back to my two dots. Okay, so I'm done. So if you needed to, you could put two coats by each one of those. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Any questions, comments? Pick up the red. Sit it down, sit it down. Mush, mush, mush. You should, you should add a leaf for the little worm above the flower. Oh, <laughs> well, this is not a worm. <laughs> I could, I guess. Yeah, I guess I could. All right, so I'm starting here. So I do want to put my dots because even I need help making sure that I've got the right number of coats on there. So normally I do three coats on lighter colors, two coats on the darker, like the leaves. But tonight, for time purposes, I'm only going to do two coats, and then I'll um, put these photos side by side on Facebook, and then that way you can see the difference. Uh, with my application, they're probably not going to be a whole lot of difference. Um, but I recommend you just do a little test, you know, get your four by four tile and uh, test it yourself because everybody applies differently. And I've been doing it so many years that I'm a, probably a little heavier than most. Okay. So how are we doing, Bert? What are we on our 45 minute time that is going to kick us off again? <laughs> mm -hmm. Hopefully not. <laughs> You know, last time, I think we went, what, an hour and 15 the second time around. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I need to investigate that. So just keep going back and forth until you get it like you want it. Grab some more orange. This just makes for a really nice, and if you've got a, uh, two or three plates, if you're doing production, I mean, one, one will be dry by the time you get to the other one, you can work back and forth. Or you can take a fan and dry it also. Um, it just makes a lot of noise, so I don't want to do that uh, on camera. What are you laughing at? Did somebody say something? I the comment about adding a leaf for a little while. Somebody came back and said, I'm a bird. No, we're not adding a bird. Don't have <laughs> enough time for a bird. Oh, sorry. I don't know who said that, but sorry. You know, fruit and flowers is my thing. I'm not real good at uh, birds. We're going to throw some brush strokes on here. So remember that. Trying to get that softer there. All right. Wipe, wipe. All right. Now we need to do the bud. I think I've still got enough orange here. So what I mixed up was probably... Um, pea size to maybe dime size amount of color and then the same amount of gloss medium with it sorry sometimes when i'm working i can't talk at the same time um and see i just got out over onto my background so i'm going to grab some clean water clean brush and quickly push that back to get it off of that area and it's good because having a background of some sort, it's almost like I call it an insurance coat so that if I'm working on top of it, I have time to get it off of there. It doesn't absorb directly into the bisque and stain it, so to speak. Okay. So there is a method to my madness, believe it or not. All right. So these are two different petals, but we're going to make them all at the same time because they're small. And then I'll just separate them when I shade them. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right and walk it to the left. And we want to walk it between so that we have 
some separation on that petal. So take your time with it. Don't get in a hurry. Okay. All right. So we're done with two coats. We rinse and we're going to go back to the leaves. Wipe out that uh, brush. Make sure you've got it clean. You should be able to tell when you wipe it on your paper towel. Okay. And then we're going to go back to the greens. How are we doing on questions? Oh, uh, no fudge. questions, but as I'm looking at... Let me grab a drink, guys. You on Facebook, it looks a little blurry. Blurry? I'm not sure it isn't trying to focus on the other piece. Oh, when, and if I move too fast, it will have a little bit of um, blurriness to it until it focuses, until I stop moving my hands. And I'm bad about talking with my hands, so I apologize. All right, so I'm going back to the green now, still using the small Sumi brush, fully load. I'm going to turn my piece around. Now, I have a hair on this particular <laughs> leaf. So what I did was just kind of finger sand it off. And if you see any of those in the background, you can do that. It will burn off, but sometimes it can leave. I think I see some glitter. I mean, imagine that. Since I do my ornaments back here in the same area, I sure don't want glitter firing. So I am going to take a minute and get that off of there. <laughs> Holy moly. Okay, it is gone. And I'm just going to touch up with some background. And then I'll double check that. You can always come back with water and uh, loosen things up. All right, so we'll do two coats on these leaves. Halfway back, turn, pick up the dark green, tuck it where you want it, keep that brush aiming in the direction of where you want that color because it's bleeding from the dark back into the light on the brush, okay? So when you've got it on here, I think you can see that. Let me put more light on my brush and then more dark. So you've got it at the bottom there and it's bleeding back into the light. Okay. And then you can turn it and cause I'm aiming the tip of the brush where I want to come up the side and add a little shadow. I'm going to wipe off same as I did before. Wipe off one, two is all you need. And once again, let's mark so that we know we have two coats. Like I said, even I forget, make, make mistakes. And uh, it's that's just always a good thing to have there. I don't know about you guys, but I need reminders. Okay. All right. Any questions? The early bird got to see the blue worm. <laughs> this was just an example up here, what they're calling the worm, if you've just joined us. It was just an example to show the transfer of the pattern. It's not part of the design, and it will not be there when it fires. Wipe off the dark. Put your dots, which will fire away. Go back to the light. Tap it in. Pat, pat, pat. Halfway to three quarters, turn, pick up the dark, tuck that dark where you want it, and then ease back up the leaf how far you want that shadow or turn so your brush is aimed towards the side if you want a little bit of a shadow there. Okay? Okay. Um, we have a question or a statement. Misty. Misty. Uh, hey, Misty have, from Florida. I think you're still in Florida. If you have a lot of color left over, mm -hmm. can you cover it with plastic and come back, use later, or is it just wasted paint? Um, so she wants to know whether you can, if you have product left over, can you cover it, come back later? If it's, um, you know, the press and seal, if you put that over it, yeah, it'll last for a long time. 
Um, you can also come in and use one of these uh, fine mist bottles and you could mist it um, if it wasn't loose enough. Now, I don't recommend you leave it for days and days, but if you had to, uh, you had an emergency and had to leave and you come back that afternoon, yes, absolutely, you can do that. Um, it depends on where you live. Um, you know, Arizona is so dry. Um, Florida, where you're at, if you're still down there, Misty, um, is humid. So it's probably going to stay open longer, you know, depending on your environment. Okay. Or you could, um, you know, there's little plastic cups with lids. You could put it in that and it'll last for a little while, but I'd still would put a piece of saran over it. Even if you put it in the cups, that'll make sure it lasts even longer. And if you're in Arizona and you're trying to save it, I would even put it in that cup and I would set it in the refrigerator. Okay, that's going to keep it moist longer. Just please label it so nobody eats it. Okay. It is non-toxic and food safe, but we don't want anybody ingesting it if at all possible. Okay, so now we've got two coats on our leaves. Did you have a question, Bert? Hmm? Okay, she yes. Said that's great. She is in Florida. Yeah, she was up by, um, hmm. help me out, Misty. Where are you at? I'm trying to remember. Jacksonville, maybe, or Panama City, if she's still in the same place. Okay. Um, now we need to put some yellow on our centers while we're letting everything else dry. I'm going to use, my bottles are getting old, guys, uh, CC123 Sunflowers. I'm going to shake that. And you can see that the uh, centers are yellow with a little bit of green. So I'm going to use a little bit of that 161 with that. But I'm going to um, put the yellow down first. And then I'm going to add the green on top. And I am going to mix some of the uh, gloss medium. Uh, yeah. I was thinking she was over that way. Misty used to come to the Orlando shows when I did those. Okay. I think that's correct. That's been a lot of years ago, probably 15 plus years. I will be doing, um, and I I think I forgot to put that on the website, but I will be going to the, um, if everything still works out and there's no problems between now and then, the Columbia, South Carolina show. It is October 1 and 2. And if you're watching this later, this is 2021. So, so I patted in like two coats. Um, it is a fire dart show, mostly ceramics, but, um, I will take my glass products. If you're going to that show and you want to pre-order, uh, please let me know. And you'll get a discount on your pre-order. Okay, so now I'm picking up some of the green that we used as the light green on the leaves. And I'm just going to add it on the lower side. Here's my stem. So that's my lower side. And I'm just going to kind of, instead of doing it half yellow, half green, I'm just adding the green on top of the yellow. And that works if it's a uh, darker color. It would not work as well if it was a lighter. Yes. I'll wipe some of that off. Did you have a question? Okay. All right. So, you know, we have a um, smaller Sumi brush um, called the Mini, and I could use it on here. But I tend to use the small probably 99% of the time. And you can do one or two coats on those. I got a little bit on the petal. I don't think it's going to bother it. But I'll show you how I take it off. Okay. Um, so we got two coats here, two coats here. So let's go ahead and we're going to um, wipe out my center here. Show you how to do the stem. So I like to use the center of my palette and do my brush strokes from there. Okay, and let me back off so that you can see. Sorry, whoop, wrong way, I always do that. Okay, 
I'm going to use the 3600 Kalinsky liner number two. And I use this in glass and ceramic. All right, so what I want is a, a little bit of a darker stem. You can take a little bit of the dark green. You can even grab a little bit of the light and mix you a medium tone. And then I add just a little bit of water on one end and thin that. I don't thin the whole puddle because it's going to evaporate. And I'm working the brush through there and pulling it out so that I get a nice point to it. So you've created, this is a well that holds your color and it's going to funnel down to that tip. Okay. So I'm going to start with my longest line, which is going to be, and you can anchor yourself with your pinky. I like to do that to keep myself steady. And I ran out of product because it's absorbing. And I'm not sure you can see that. Pull and then lift off of that tip. So, oh, we should ask the question about brush strokes. Wonder who would get that. Let's don't. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody remember? I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> what is a brush stroke? Which you're going to need to know that if you're going to do um, the strokes around the edge of the plate. What is a brush stroke? I just added a little bit more dark into here so it would show up on top of these colors. So I always start from where it grows from when I'm pulling into my leaf. The reason I started up here this time because I wanted to be able to pull that little tail or curly cue there at the bottom. Did anybody? Oh, look at Rosemary. Rosemary jumped right on. <laughs> All right. Good girl. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Very good, you guys. You are listening. All right. So was Rosemary the first one? Rosemary was first. Okay, Rosemary. Guess what? I, you know, and I did that in green, and I did not do that in green on this one. I did it in black. So um, I'm not going to do the rest of them. Sorry, I was talking and doing it at the same time. Rosemary, I will uh, send you one of these brushes. Write down a 3600 number two. So when Miss Nell orders again, uh, remind me and I'll send that out if that's okay. Uh, or when I see you in October, when I come down for the show and have a class, we are going to have some sort of a class at um, Craftwork Ceramics in Northport, Alabama, which is uh, the north side of Tuscaloosa off of Highway 69. Um, we will do some type of, I'm not sure if we're just doing ceramic or if we're going to do ceramic and glass. Um, we're going to work out those details. So I'll give it to you then if nothing else, Rosemary. Okay. All right. Thank, I'm glad you guys got that. See, if I tell you enough, then you're going to finally, you know, get it. All right. I'm going to rinse that out. So... I try to work from the center out. So I'm going to detail this and then I will do my strokes. That way I'm not laying my hand inside on something. Okay. And smudging it. And I think it's dry enough. Normally I would let it dry a little bit more. I see a little speck of something there. There we go. Um, I'm going to use CC 101 color concentrate cobalt black. Pure, just shake, ready to go. I think you can see that. Okay. And then I'm going to thin one corner once again. I'm just going to thin one side. It doesn't do any good. If you started thinning the whole thing, you'd end up with a lake before you could get it to the right consistency. It's going to evaporate. You're going to have to add more water anyway. So don't waste the time. I am double checking to make sure I don't have any black on my. Uh, ferrule of the brush so it doesn't drip down on my piece. Okay. And I only put one coat on the centers. You could do two. It, it, these two light colors, it's really not going to make much of a, a difference. Now, notice also that there are some thick and thin lines. 
So that's where that pressure, so we got black as our color, pressure, and then the way we curve it is gonna create that outline, okay? I'm turning that one upside to get it inside the camera view so that you can see that, hopefully. All right, I'm gonna reload, make sure I've got some on there. I'm just gonna start down here at this one. So you can kind of do your own thing. You can make it absolutely straight if you wanted. And then I pull fine little lines for stamens, make them different lengths. And then I go back and just kind of tap the end of my brush. I call them little tick marks. I don't know why I call them that, but that's what I've always called them. So press and lift, press and lift. And I'm going to go over here and press and lift and press. So see, you get highs and lows or thick and thin. Constantly reload. Make sure you've got a nice point on there. And I'm just barely, I'm just on the tippy toes. Think of it as tickling the piece. Not much pressure at all. And the little tick marks don't have to be exactly on the ends of those lines, even though I usually put one on the end and then I add extras. See how I'm just applying a little bit more pressure to get a thicker line. You got a question? Yeah. You're welcome, Rosemary. I'm so glad I got him helping because it's hard to see everything and run the controls and especially when Facebook decides to throw you off. I'm not sure why. We may have to explore different ways of doing this. I guess I need to read the rules. Just be careful if you're putting your finger down on your design, you're not scratching it, okay? So you're just up on the tippy toes and pulling different links. And then adding a few more dots. Reload as you need it. Press and lift, press and lift. And then I come up on the other side to finish it off. Okay. Any questions? You will want to let this dry before you glaze it. Well, you don't have to let it completely dry. Okay. I let the wet look go away and then I um, glaze it. Now that's another myth that some people have is you had to let it dry until tomorrow. Absolutely not. You do not have to do that uh, with our product. And you didn't, when I used to work for Habacalorobia 20 years ago, um, we did not let it dry either. Uh, you just want to make sure, because if you let this completely bone dry and you come in with a soppy fan brush and glaze, you're gonna just pull that color across. If you have to let it dry and you have to come back the next day, just mist it with water, let that water absorb and then do your glaze work. That's what I do. And I believe I showed that, um, I added footage on the end of the yellow rose showing the um, glaze process. So check that out if you're new to our product or new to glazing that will help you so press and lift press and lift so you can make it thick and thin now did you notice i pulled that one down because he was facing down i'm going to turn my peas to do this leaf i always generally start oops i got to do the center where it grows from Okay, so what I did, I mean, you could do a little wavy line. Um, you can also just use the tip of the brush and put some little dots around there to kind of create that border. It's hard to touch lightly and talk at the same time. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and then you can also um, create like a little uh, C shape to make it look like it's got a divot. Okay. All right. So when I come up here, I am kind of accenting that vein. I 
and then thick and thin. And you'll usually be able to tell my pieces because I like to do that little curl at the end of my leaves. You know, sometimes you can look at somebody's pieces and um, say, oh, that's a David Hoff piece. That's a Priscilla Hauser piece. Oh, they're low in 30 years on Nine Peaks Roadshow. Say that again. Oh, in 30 years at the Road Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> My kids, we used to watch that, and the kids would say, Mom, how come your pieces aren't on the Antiques Roadshow? And I said, because I'm not dead yet. <laughs> they were so cute about it. I'm like, your pieces are much better than theirs. They used, we used to go in stores, and they'd say that, and I'm like, hush. Be quiet. Don't embarrass me. So I'm just constantly reloading. And I, like I said, I will put this pattern um, on. I'll make a blog page and link the video. And I'll just list the colors, okay, so that you can have this pattern. Somebody asked me to do this pattern on here. Um, I'm not going to show you all my. It was on this Murini piece. And so basically I just sketched it back out. So this is on glass. So Dan, if you're still out there, um, you would just do it with your glass colors, do a two color blend with your glass colors and it's outlined uh, with glitz, gold glitz. Now, what I may do is do another live and I may come back and use real gold and show you how to do that application. If anybody is interested in that, that's what I'll do on one of these pieces. Okay, and I'll use a, um, it's called a writer. I don't have one sitting here. It's like a little funnel type thing. It's a pen. Any questions? They're being awful quiet tonight. Yeah, been the last several minutes. Did we lock up? No. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're still going. We're still going. All right. You're just fascinated by your curls. You think that's it? So I'm just going back and accenting on the stem. And before I forget to do it down here, I better do it right now. Because I have been known to forget something. Always, always don't talk when you're trying to do that because that doesn't look real good. But it'll have to be. All right. So we're going to go back up here and thick and thin. It makes it more interesting. And everybody has, you know, a distinctive outline. You know it's yours. Or you always, and I don't like the way that went, you always do it the same or similar way. I'm thinning down some more black. Can you see okay or do you need me to zoom in maybe to show you this flower since we didn't... Um, do that on the other. Okay. Just Mickey watch me. He says they're quiet because they don't want to disturb you. <laughs> Cute, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> if we were on Zoom. Oh, speaking of Zoom, there's something wrong with the plug-in for the Zoom meeting on my website. Um, we're supposed to have a meeting Saturday. If anybody is interested, um, I think what I'll do is just post a link on Facebook, and you can uh, just go to that link and get on the meeting if we have if you're interested let me know put a comment or message me and i'll make sure that i send you an email or make sure that i tag you on the post um you know everybody keeps changing stuff and it's just creating havoc in my world because then i got to figure out how to um fix and that one has stumped me so far A lot of times you can't get a hold of tech people to help you. So, okay, thick and thin, different lengths, touch with the tip of the brush, my little tick marks, and then add you some other ones in there. Maybe there's nobody left on. Maybe that's why they're being so quiet. We still, oh, uh, yeah. Still two people. Two people, thanks, Bert. <laughs> That was a little long. 
thick and thin color concentrate black on ceramics. Who can tell me, this is just a question, no giveaway, just a question. What did I mix my color concentrates with to do the two color blends on the petals? And Rosemary, you don't get to answer. You got the last one right. Hey, Robin. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, so what, what product did I mix with the color concentrates? before I started so that I could do a two color blend. What it what keeps it open longer to allow me to manipulate? See, if I ask you these things and keep telling you, then it will stick in your mind, hopefully at some point. Does anybody know, Bert? Does Bert know? Oh, I see medium <laughs> and water. I see medium and glaze. I see water and glaze. So gloss medium. Oh, Rosemary, well, I know the answer. I know you know the answer because you've been to retreats. Gloss Medium NT Clear, which is our clear glaze, CSP01. Okay. So we mix 50-50. Hey, Miss Nell, I see you there. <laughs> and then I'm just going to add little dots around the center to frame it, so to speak. And depending on how much pressure you put down, those little marks will be heavier or lighter, larger, smaller. So now this would be a really good one for you to teach at your shop. You and Rosemary. Okay, and then I'm going to make that little crescent or U shape just by kind of touching. Okay. Isn't that pretty? So the dots out here, if you've just joined us, those are just watercolor marker dots that I transferred my pattern. And that's how I kept track of how many coats I put in that area. It will burn off in the kiln. It will not be there. Okay. So Miss Nell, we need to figure out what... Um, now, why don't you list your uh, studio name and address, email, phone number, put that in the chat. So anybody that we're not sure if I'm going to teach uh, before or after the South Carolina show, but it'll be sometime around October 1 to um, time frame. Now, because this one is a um, bud, you only have your little marks on the inside. You wouldn't have them on the outside. Okay. And then we'll add these on there also, the little calyx. Okay. So... And if any of my other CFE studios are out there and on tonight, you feel free to put your information out there. And then somebody that's in your area, at least they know they can get with you. Um, they are listed on our website also at the very bottom of the website. Um, it says CFE Studios and Teachers. Okay. And then you just got to find a place to um, sign. And on the last one, and I'm not going to talk when I do this because it's hard to talk and write. I'm just going to add it down here. Sorry, it's hard to write and do that at the same time. All right, I think you can see that. All right, so clean that brush. And now I'm going to go back and uh, do the little calyx on up here. So I'm going to add those that holds that bud together. So I'm just going to tip into uh, the light green and grab a little bit of the dark green. Make sure I'm on camera. And I'm just going to do a press, pull, and lift. I'm going to press it down and lift up and then maybe have one hanging. Normally I pull those strokes towards me, but so you can see it, I kind of did it the other way. Now I will have to go back and put some black on that. Somebody remind me of that, Mr. Burt. Ha uh ha. -huh. Okay. So 
Let's turn it this way and let's back off. Vicky says, I think the one flower on the left needs the stem done. The one flower, the bud? Everything's got a stem. This has got one in here. It's just hard. Let me put it up there so you can see. But everything does have green and, oh, the black on it. That's what she's probably telling me. You are always catching me. Good eye. Good eye. I've got to wait till that bud dries before I can do it. Okay, so if you're unsure, I mean, I freehanded these on here, okay? And I only did uh, the outer two here because my bud was close. I did move it a little bit on this second piece. But you can um, come in and actually, like, make a line if that's where you want those strokes to be. And I'll draw you a pattern because I know somebody's going to ask. So this is a way that you could do it. Remember, this is going to burn off my worm. Does anybody know which stroke I'm going to start with? Am I going to start in the center or am I going to start on the sides? Anybody know that? I'm going to mix me up some more green color, light green. All right, so Nell put her information there. Like I said, she's just um, a few miles north on I-69. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, from Tuscaloosa and off of uh, I-20. She's maybe 20 minutes north of I-20. I think that's right. It's been a year and a half, two years. <laughs> okay. You're starting in the center. Very good. Sorry, I had to get a drink. Yes, I'm going to start in the center. I am. Very good. So you guys are learning. And do you know why that is? It's because then you won't get off balance. Now, with this being really dry right now, um, I know I think it was Janet was asking, if you sand, or at least with my hands because they're so rough, if I sand across this, you can literally rub off your color. Okay? So you wouldn't want to do that. Um too much on there. I was getting rid of a hair that was on there. Okay, so I'm going to full, I've got a number three Bavarian round. It's number, it's a 500 series. You can search uh, by Bavarian, B-A-V-A-R-I-A-N. You can search by 500 or you can just go to the brushes and then go to the um, Kalinske brushes and it's a size three. Okay, so I'm going to fully load in the lighter green. I'm going to shape it kind of on the side so I got some sort of a point. And you know what I didn't do? I didn't loosen this. Uh, this has been sitting here. So I'm going to add just a dot of water and mix that up. Because when you're mixing and you're doing two colors on a brush at the same time, if both colors are not the same consistency, it will not act right. They need to be the same consistency so that you get your brush loaded properly. Okay. So fully loading the light, I'm going to tip fairly generously. I think you can, let me move that. There you can see that in the dark. And I'm going to do a press, pull, and lift or a comma stroke. And I'm going to come out further because I know my stroke is larger. So um, press, pull, lift, 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 and lift to a point. Now, I didn't grab a piece of paper to do this on. But let me show you. So you press, pull, and as you pull, slightly turn. If you guys, if you watch what I'm doing right here, you're just slightly pivoting or turning the brush. Let's do it again. Okay, and I'm kind of moving the brush back more than normal. I would be more upright, but I want you to be able to see it. Okay, so I'm pressing down to get the size I want. Start pulling, pulling, start lifting, lifting, and slightly turning to get that point. Okay, so press, pull, and lift. And you can do them in different directions. Okay, and that's what we're going to do on the sides. 
So hopefully that helps you. And we did a, hey, Luann, you're waving at me. Hello. <laughs> um, thanks for joining. Okay, so I'm fully loading in the light green tip into the dark. I'm going to turn this a little bit because I do want to pull my stroke towards me. Press, pull, and lift. Reload with the light. I'm not taking the dark off. It's okay. As long as I can still see both of those colors coming out, then I'm good. If it gets all completely dark, and you'll be able to tell if you're completely dark on your brush, then you would want to either wipe it on your sponge or go back and rinse and reload and start fresh. Okay. Fully load in light. Tip and dark. Press, pull, lift, lift, and pivot. Fully load in light. Tip and dark. Now, what goes on the brush last comes off first. So that dark's going to be at the tip and it's going to variegate and pull lines of that dark through there. So that's why we have to keep adding it. So what goes on the brush last comes off first. Press, pull, and lift. Fully load in the light, tip in the dark. Remember, that's a strong color. You don't need a whole lot on there. Press, pull, and lift. So you got a little bit of brush stroke with this one too, not just the um, design tonight. Press, pull, and lift to a point. Fully load, light green, tip and dart. Press, pull, and lift. Fully load, tip into the dark. I'm turning the piece because I'm always pulling towards me. Press, pull, and lift. Oops, I got, came off short on that one. I get to talking and then I stop thinking about what I'm doing. Okay, fully load in the light. Tip into the dark. Press, pull, and lift to a point. Do we have any questions, Bert? Mm -hmm. Press, pull, and lift. They're learning. Press, pull, and lift. Isn't that pretty? Ignore the worm. Ignore the worm. Ginger says good night. Good night, Miss Ginger. She's East Coast. <laughs> Watch the replay. There's not much left. Uh, I'm just going to do a little thick and thin line with my liner brush and uh, both of those greens again. And you can see these are just a thick and then thin, and you wouldn't have to do those if you didn't want to. Sometimes I go overboard. It's hard to stop. Okay, so I have those coming out from underneath the stroke. So press and pull. Now when I do these, I go do the same stroke on every corner because I'm always pulling in the same direction. Press, pull, lift. Can't you just hear that come off the ceramic disc? Press, pull, lift. Press, lift. Okay, now we're going to do the other side. So I'm going to come over here and do it from this direction. Press, pull, and lift. And I'm reloading for each stroke. Press, pull, and lift. You can always practice on um, you know, your sketch pad. Old phone books, if anybody still has those. Those are really good. You can also practice your brush strokes with water, or excuse me, with um, food coloring in your water. You can do it and um, you can even do it on your bisque and it will burn off. You can fire that off. So did everybody hear that? If you put food coloring in your water bowl and you just practice brush strokes on bisque because you get the feel of the brush, okay? Yes, you don't have the product in there, but it does give you a better feel of the surface because paper acts different than your ceramic. And you can practice your banding that way too with the banding wheel. And then just put it in a bisque or uh, glaze firing and it will burn off. It's gone. Then you can go back and uh, do your 
real thing. Okay, so then I had a dot at the end. And I'm just using a large end. So depending on the handle of the brush. And if you load for each dot, you should have the same size dot on everything. If you keep going, does everybody know this? If you keep going, let me get a bunch on here so you can see it. If you keep going, it gradually gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so that's why I loaded for each time because I wanted the same size dot on each one of those sections or corners. Okay. All right. Does anybody remember what I was supposed to go back and do? Vicky remembers, I bet. Yeah, it says don't forget the black outline on the bed. <laughs> That's exactly what I was doing. Okay, so I like to do on the calic, um, I'll do one side and a center vein if they're large enough. And I'm constantly turning and doing the same side. Okay, so other than the ugly worm up there, you can see that. So what do you think, guys? Fun project. So it is done. I would have to wait until my dots dry before I could clear glaze. Okay. But as long as you use a nice soft white goat fan brush, we have different sizes of the fans available on the website. Um, saturate it with the glaze and go one, two, maybe a third time get more glaze one two get more glaze one two don't keep going back and forth and back and forth and trying to smooth that out because all you're going to do is your that glaze is moist it's going to moisten what's underneath it it's going to lift it and it's going to move it and drag it and smear it okay so if i were going to wait till tomorrow let's say this had dried uh, and now i will wait till tomorrow i'm going to do my back anyway but i would come in here and watch what happens when I spray this and you can do this before you detail and what it'll do is show you what your colors are going to be when it fires. It gives you a good idea of what they're going to be. Okay. You would have to wait before you outlined it. Okay. But watch this. Ready? Look how it deepens and darkens. And that's what it's going to look like when it's fired. It gives you, it's going to brighten. Okay. But at least it gives you a darker tone so that you can tell okay what it's going to look like okay but they are going to brighten all right okay thanks Jeannie. i'm glad you like it sue thank you for oh you're welcome i like i said i'll put the pattern i'll probably do it tomorrow so give me time it's been a long day we had storms and thank goodness uh, those didn't knock us off tonight um it kind of started to quieten down a little bit so We've had some crazy weather over the last week. We had hail a few days ago, golf ball size at my house. And uh, there was a uh, single wide trailer two and a half miles from me that was flipped over on its side. Uh, crazy. Let me go back to my other camera. Okay. Hey, there I am. All right. And I'll leave that up there. So yeah, it flipped this trailer over and I didn't realize where it was at but it was just two and a half miles from me. And uh, my daughter and I said, yeah, it was right over there. And I'm like, okay, wonderful. I'm glad I didn't know it was that close, but it was a crazy night that night. So hope you enjoyed this. Um, yeah, and it is in two parts. Um, I, might, I might see if I can combine the two, but if not, I'll mark them as one and two. I'll go back and rename them out on YouTube. So um, I gotta figure out what Facebook is doing and why. Um, yeah, and Robin's had bad weather over towards Atlanta also. All right, Mr. Burt stepped away for just a minute, so I get to talk to you until he gets back um, to pick the winners for tonight. Thanks, Luann. I hope you like it. It's, you know, it's a fun, it's a fun little project, and I hope you can use it on different things. And those of you that do glass, if you're on here, like I said, do a two-color blend with your enamels. Um, you don't have to outline. You could outline with um, your paste. You could do the black outline. So there's different ways you can achieve uh, the same thing. So, um, but hopefully you enjoyed it. So I would do the back also. Okay, so don't forget I did 
do the back of it. Um, I did not put an edge on this one. I thought I'd just leave it soft and let the corners be more pronounced with the brush strokes. So um, that's just what I decided to do. Okay, so um, I'm going to take away that picture real quick. Oh, I thought I was going to take it away. I didn't I want to hide it. There we go. Um, no, it still didn't. Oh, don't you love controls? <laughs> All right, I'm going to. I forgot to, I changed cameras and I forgot. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so anyway, this kit does have all the colors that I use tonight. So you could um, buy that kit if you're new to the product and um, do the project, okay? So I think everything is in there. The 160 is not in there, but you could use um, just the 161 or you can buy it separately, okay? Sorry, I changed cameras and... Um, Hopefully you can hear me now. Yeah. Okay. I thought I was back. I, I, I didn't have my sound man here. Uh, he didn't tell me, hey, <laughs> you need to switch back. All right, Bert, we are ready to draw names. Spin. Um, we're going to do the watercolor poppy uh, DVD CD combo. Um, if you already have this, please comment and tell me you have it. And I can uh, substitute another thing or we can uh you know do something different okay i was whispering vicky thanks <laughs> anyway okay who's our winner of the watercolor poppy video well the watercolor video came up now fair nail fair okay awesome i don't think she's done that project so that'll be cool. All right. And then the next one is for the ceramic vase, brush strokes, strawberry brush strokes that I did in a webinar. This is about eight inches tall and six inches wide or so. I have a tile, so I'm going to give away the vase. And the winner is. He's very methodical about this. <laughs> oh, not really. Not really? Okay. I just get impatient. Yes. It's like Teresa Evans Maynard. Teresa Evans Maynard. I didn't know Teresa was on there. Hey. Teresa has been to quite a few of my retreats in my home studio also. Maybe we can get that going again later this year. Okay, what else did I say I was given? Oh, and then the plate that we did tonight. Okay, so this one is the next winner. Who is that, Bert? Uh, me. You, you don't need another piece. You're the one that wants me to sell everything. <laughs> okay. All right, who is the winner of tonight's project? Well, well, just pick one, spin and pop it. He's sighing really hard. You can probably hear that. Come on, they're getting antsy. They're going to go away. You got to tell them, hurry, hurry, hurry. Well, I know, but the suspense is fun. The suspense is fun. He thinks the suspense is fun for you guys. You can comment in there and tell him it's not. <laughs> um... Yes, it's ceramic. I'm not sure how to say your name, Olivia, but yes, it's ceramic that I worked on tonight. Yes, come on. I get impatient. Well, I can't see that. Far. You can't see that far? You picked the other ones. What's the deal? <laughs> Sonia Schifferdecker. Sonia Shippard? Schifferdecker. 
Schiffer Decker. Okay, I'm not sure we're saying that right, but um, Sonia, I'm trying to find her here on the. She must, if you're still on here, you are the winner. Now, if you won and I've never shipped to you before, um, please private message me your email address, phone number, and that way I can send you tracking. If you're going to place an order, tell me that also and I will hold it. I have one from last week that we're still holding. Somebody's going to uh, place an order and they said just wait and ship it. So let me know that, okay? And I thank you all for joining me. And hopefully you can use the pattern, the design, even if you, like I said, if you don't do ceramic, you want to use it on glass, you want to use it on wood with your acrylics, Robin, you can do that, okay? Do your one stroke type painting, all right? And you can change the pattern up and do it in brush strokes as opposed to the way I did. It's just, I'm trying to show you different techniques with the products that you have or will purchase so that you know how to get the most out of those, okay? All right. Congratulations, everyone, and I'll see you next week. We'll be doing glass, and as usual, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I'll figure that out in a day or so, okay? Take care, and stay safe, everybody. Bye-bye.